time, last time on MasterChef Canada. Don't be shy, get up here! A punishing team challenge sent four home cooks into an intense <laughs> pressure test. Don't solve it. Do you not season your fish? I didn't season the fish, no. And Michael V's culinary dreams... Thank you. ...went up in flames. Get ready for the fight of your lives. Tonight... This competition's so intense, I plucked my first gray hair today. Oh, come on. The home cooks face a series of grueling pressure tests. You must master them, or you won't survive. Hands are shaking. One second can ruin my dish. I've got adrenaline going through my veins. One slip, and you're out. I made it to the top eight, and I'm very happy with what I've done here so far. My mom would be incredibly proud. <laughs> I'm not wearing my fancy dancy white apron. I'm wearing the dark gloomy black, and I don't know why. Black aprons mean it's the end for someone's journey. I think we're all pretty nervous. Nobody's at the front. Just kind of waiting. Where are the judges? Home cooks, turn around. Top eight, the competition is getting harder and harder. And tonight is no exception. You are about to compete in a series of pressure tests. They will culminate in one of you going home. You'll face three different tests requiring incredible skill. You must master them or you won't survive. Get ready for the fight of your lives. The judges are being super intense today. The battle begins right here. With eight home cooks. Half of you will crawl your way to safety up in the gallery. The other four will move on to the second round. Here, the four remaining home cooks will engage in a fight for survival. Two more will be safe. The other two will face the final challenge. Here, the remaining home cooks will go head to head with everything on the line. And there's no margin for error. I just finished my last pressure test and survived. And now I have to do it again. The classics you'll be tackling tonight all hail from the same place, France. When you say French cuisine, you think technique and you think hours and hours and hours of practice to get the most minute detail right. Well, I'm from a country that's right next to France, so. French cooking techniques are the foundation of modern Western cuisine. And they had an enormous impact around the globe. I combined French techniques and Asian flavors to create some of my most famous dishes. First challenge you're facing requires perfect technique. A plain French omelet. I think I've only made three or four omelets, and I don't even think any of them were French. A French omelet is only two ingredients, butter and eggs, smooth and silky on the outside, an even bright yellow hue, and on the inside, soft, custody, what the French call baveurs. You have exactly one opportunity to achieve perfection and we're giving you just enough time. Four minutes. Oh my God. While omelets seem very easy, they're actually really technical, and to only have four minutes, I can't even change my daughter's diaper in four minutes. The home cooks who make the best four omelets will head straight to safety in the gallery. The other four will head straight to an even tougher task. Please head to your stations. Oh, I'm gonna have to pull something out real fierce to get through to the next round because, quite frankly, I hate omelets. 
Everyone here is here to compete. I'm not gonna be able to let up or else I'm going home. It's as simple as that. Are you ready to cook your way to safety? Yes, yes chef. chef! Well, get cracking because your time starts now! When you're testing a new chef, often the first thing you get them to make is guess what? The omelet. This is a game of nerves because one slip and you're out. I need to crack my four eggs and there can't be any egg whites. It has to be really uniform and bright yellow. There's only two ingredients when it comes to an omelet, butter and eggs, and a lot of technique goes into it. Nothing can hide behind the flavor of a great cooked omelet. The omelets I make at home usually have veggies and meat and cheese, and they're huge and they're fat. But I've never cooked eggs like this before. The eggs need to be not only seasoned, but the salt actually helps break down the egg so you can whisk it so it's nice and smooth. All you can hear is whisking, butter melting, and people just working hard. I have it on high heat, I throw the eggs in, and I know as soon as I do, I better start stirring. One of the mistakes that can happen here is that the heat in the pan is too high. If it's too high, it will scorch and actually start to caramelize those delicate eggs. Come on, sweethearts, cook. If you work it too much with a fork or spatula, you'll end up with a scrambled egg. Undercook it, and it will be non-edible. Come on, babies. Cook, you things. Four minutes feel like it's only 10 seconds. It's going by really quickly. Let's go, eggs. Cook eggs, cook. I got the first fold done, no cracks. The hardest part is getting it out the pan, like over the lip into the plate. Wow, Becky was the first out of the pan. One minute, you have one more minute left. I'm trying to gently fold the egg, but I can barely do it because my hand is shaking so much. Then the egg started sticking. I had the pan too hot. It's a complete disaster. Time's ticking. I need to carefully remove it from the pan and just plate it. I don't like how it's not smooth on the outside, but it's got the perfect cook on it. 30 seconds! My eggs aren't even fully cooked, but I need to start folding them. Hands are shaking. Please bring your French-style omelets to the front. The top eight finish the first round of a battle for survival, and the judges will now decide who has made the best omelet. I needed like four more seconds on the heat to make it perfect. Four seconds. I look at the other home cooked omelets. There's a couple good ones, but there's also a couple that are total mess. So I'm feeling better about mine. I think that I'm in that top four. I'm nervous, but I think I got this. Michael G. Chef. A fast and furious four minutes. How do you think you did? <laughs> uh, I think I did very well. The outside looks a little bit on the rugged side, not as smooth as I would expect. A nice tapered end on one side, a little misshapen on the other. Good color. Shows that the pan was not too hot. Is it going to be perfectly custody moist on the inside? I believe so. Let's take a look. It's not too bad. It looks a little soft and tender. And very creamy on the inside, but maybe just a tad over a few seconds. Keep practicing. It's not perfect, but all I need right now is good enough. Becky, are you pleased with your omelet? Yeah, there's no cracks or anything in it. What happened here? Where? See some of the whites here? Didn't whip your eggs properly. Mm-hmm. This should look very uniform. The edges here should be sealed. Why didn't you take advantage of that last minute? I just wasn't really watching the clock. I was just getting it done. OK, well, let's see. So is this going to be runny? It's not going to be runny. Want to bet? Not really. <laughs> You should have wagered, because you would have won. <laughs> <laughs> I 
This proves to me why you're here. It's almost textbook. A few little issues, but it shows a lot of promise. Good job. I'm learning a lot from Chef Claudio. Just the tiniest little tips are really helpful. Jen. Hello, Chef Alvin. I think you got your white apron with an egg stitch, right? I did my eggs benedict. Are you as good doing an omelet as you are doing eggs benedict? Ah, uh, this is my first French omelet, so we'll see. The color is perfect. Thank you. And it's also nice and smooth. Now, I want it absolutely custody right in the center. Mmm. Touch over moist. Just a touch. Just a touch. It's seasoned well, but it's a little bit too soft. Thank you, Chef Alvin. This competition's so intense, I plucked my first gray hair today. I know that the flavors are there, but I'm not uh, liking how it looks. So, Jonathan, what are you thinking right now? This is not my best effort. What went wrong? I was afraid of getting color on the top of it, so I kept moving my pan off and on the burner. It's a common mistake. This is almost verging on scrambled eggs, not an omelet. It ain't pretty, but it tastes great. Nadia, tell me why you're looking so worried. This is not what I would ever serve to you. I don't think that my pan was hot enough, and I didn't want to have it too high so that there was brown on top of it. Let's take a look inside. Nice and tender on the inside, so we're down to the taste. Taste and texture says it's top eight, but looks, absolutely not. Thank you, Chef. Hey, Chef Claudio. Are you not happy with this? Because <laughs> you seem like you're almost disappointed with yourself. I just know I've done it so many times and it's been smooth on the outside and that's really upsetting me. I can see what happened here. Your pan in one little spot did not have enough butter in it. It's dry. But overall, the shape is great. The way it just contours out, tapers in. It's a very even color. I gotta remind myself, you're a home cook, and you achieved this. To me, it looks like a professional did it. Thank you, Chef. Extraordinary. If you made someone breakfast in bed and you served them this, man, <laughs> it's all over. Thank you, Chef. <laughs> Being told that it's almost perfect is incredible. I'm extremely humbled by Chef Claudio's comments. Marissa. Yes, Chef. Have you ever made an omelet? This is my very first French omelet. The time did get the best of me, and this is the result of that. It's uh, embarrassing to present this to you today. I see a lot of problems here. You definitely don't have the shape. It's broken here. Mm -hmm. It's leaking here. It's got some discoloration here. It is an ugly duckling. <laughs> Agreed. Which side do you want me to cut? The side that isn't pouring out. Season well, got all the textures, you got the moisture. Unfortunately, we have half an omelet. If this were an elimination challenge, I'd be packing my bags. Andy. Chef Michael. You used a different technique to add a little extra shape to your omelet. Throw your kitchen towel over the top. It is a chef's trick. Where did you learn that? Uh, my wife's favorite food is eggs and omelets. She usually gives me six minutes, but it's just something I've read and seen done. Didn't quite work for you. Not quite perfect. No. Maybe you need those two extra minutes. <laughs> it's all about the inside. Not as soft and tender as I would like. Seasoning, excellent. Good. Probably the best one yet. Thank you, Chef. But a little rough around the edges. Just maybe a couple of seconds too long in the pan. I think 
think I did enough to get through this round. It keeps on coming down to seasoning, and I think I did just that. Please give us a moment. There were some that had great shape, taste, and texture, but were a little on the older side. I know that my dish is not good, and I know I'm not getting a free pass, so what's next? There was one, though, that completely blew me away. I'm thinking it's gonna be me. I own what I've done and I'm ready. Call my name, call my name. I'm going up to that balcony. Four minutes, two ingredients, nowhere to hide. One home cook delivered a nearly flawless omelet. Congratulations, Eugene. Okay, guys. Becky, your omelet wasn't quite as attractive, but its velvety interior tasted just as good. Congratulations. Good job, Becky. Good job, Becky. Good job, Becky. You and Eugene are safe tonight. And you'll also be captains in the next team challenge. <laughs> oh, boy. Please head on up to the gallery. Thank you, sir. I'm extremely happy that I'm heading up to the balcony. It's kind of a relief knowing that even though I strive to be better, it's, it's good enough. I feel like super proud because this is the first time I made a French omelet. I'm the youngest captain ever. There were two more home cooks who did just enough to survive. The home cooks who did enough are... There were two more home cooks who did just enough to survive. The remaining four have a much tougher challenge ahead of them. The home cooks who did enough to make it up to the gallery are... Andy! And... Michael Chi. Please run on up to the gallery. Good job, guys. Boom, I'm going up to the balcony. This is awesome. I got it. I'm up top. I'm safe. I don't have to cook in the next elimination challenge. And I'm top seven. Ah! All right, you four, follow us, please. Going into the second round, I've reset. I'm ready to go. I have studied French classics. I just suck at omelets. So I'm hoping it's something that I have more confidence in. I have to be down there right now. All right, home cooks, it's time for you to demonstrate another classic French technique. Are you primed to see what it is? Yes, yes chef. chef. You look terrified. I just need to know what it is. This time, your survival depends on... A butter-basted steak, perfectly cooked to medium rare. The French term for this technique is arrosé. We're looking for a beautifully browned crust, a tender pink interior, with just a hint of red. This is what I'm looking for exactly. You got it? Yes, yes chef. chef. I make butter-basted steak fairly often, so I have a really good shot at making it up to the balcony after this round. Now I have another chance to show the judges that I can do what they ask me to do. Two more spots in the gallery are up for grabs. You will have 15 minutes to cook and rest your steak. Everything you need is at your stations, including premium German-made Mila appliances. Let's do this. I am the most determined I've ever been in my life. I just want to be up there and safe and know I made it. Are you ready? Yes, yes, yes. yes. The time starts now! The first thing I do is get my pan searing hot. One of the most important aspects of this dish is getting a beautiful sear on the steak. I'm very happy that it's steak and not a French omelet again. <laughs> Two minutes to bring the pan up to high heat, eight minutes to cook, and five minutes to let your steak relax, and you'll be cooking a perfect medium rare. 
I'm extremely focused, <laughs> just trying to get this done in a timely manner so I have more than enough time to rest my stuff. It's very important when you season meat to be liberal because a lot of that seasoning will be lost to the pan. I have to amp this salt up and butter. I do not want to let the judges down. I'm secretly rooting for Jonathan. He's an amazing, charismatic guy and has a good soul. I really do want this, but I'm also missing my family. My mom taught me how to cook. She was a single mother and raised my brother and I. And I want them to be proud of what I'm going to put on the plate today. All the seasoning's been wiped off of Jonathan's. Mm. He's wiping all the seasoning off. Just waiting for my oil to smoke. I wanted to rip my hair out. Oh, come on. When the steak goes in, you want to hear it sizzle. If you don't get that sizzle, you are in trouble right out of the gate. I love the intensity of the pressure test. I can see the fear in their eyes, and it's kind of exciting to see. I know Marissa is a badass with steaks, so I'm really happy to be up on the balcony because the difference between having a perfect steak and being underdone or overdone is really minute. I've got adrenaline going through my veins. This is it. I want to be up there with my buds. I, I need to be up there. I don't want to wait any longer. I'm pretty confident in Marissa because she's into proteins, and the rest are a bit iffy. You want the exterior of that steak to caramelize. Add more butter and baste and baste to keep it moist. Everything they do matters here. The way they season, the way they sear, the way they rest, everything matters. Hey, Jonathan, that's too much butter. Look at Nadia's pan. It is spewing off lots of big smoke there. That concerns me. She could be burning her herbs. She could be burning the steak. She could yeah. be burning the garlic. One second can ruin my dish. If I do not get the heat right in this pan, I'm done. With safety in the gallery on the line, four home cooks have six minutes to finish the most important steak of their lives. Look at Nadia's pan. It is spewing off lots of big smoke there. I get it right off the heat because one second can ruin your dish. Five minutes, five minutes left. Make sure you leave enough time to rest your steak. The sear on the outside is perfection. I just want to see a beautiful pink center. I lay my steak down very carefully, and I just wait. Patience is a virtue. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. I'm feeling very unsure. Like, here's unsure, and I'm like, here. I'm only going to find out if I nailed it when the judges slice that bad boy open. Jonathan, what is the color that you're trying to achieve in the center of the steak? The medium rare. You miss some of the caramelization here. You can see that. See how it's gray? Yeah. See that? Let's make the cut and see if you actually made the cut. Look at that. That's perfect. It's a thing of beauty. Thank you. How's it taste? Hmm. Could use more salt. But overall, really solid performance. Thank you. I'm thrilled. I feel a little bit more confident. Where's that? Chef Michael. You a steak lover? I am a steak lover. I actually heard you have a dog by the name of Porterhouse. Porterhouse is my dog. <laughs> Interesting. And are you pleased with the outcome using this classic French technique? Yes, I am. I achieved a nice sear on all sides of the steak. So let's see how you did on the cook. Very good.
think it could have been pushed just a little bit more with the seasoning. You lose a lot of salt and pepper when you're cooking and basting. But not bad at all. Just wish it was a porterhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marissa. Thank you, Chef. Nadia. Hello, Chef Alvin. Pan was smoking. You cook a lot of steak? I have, but usually I do it on my grill in the middle of a park. Well, how do you think you're done? I'm hoping that it's a beautiful medium rare. How did you know it's a medium rare? I used a small pin. I just put it in and then I just put it together. That's right, your most sensitive part of your body right there. Where did you get that trick from? A wonderful chef. I, I didn't recall telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, very good caramelization. Thank you, chef. So, the moment of truth. Please open it. <laughs> you are killing me right now. <laughs> Seems good. So, did you season it? Yeah, definitely. I was liberal with the salt. It's nicely seasoned. You know what I like about you, Nadia? Tell me. You don't do things halfway. Thank you, Chef Alvin. I'm feeling pretty happy. There is a very good chance that I'm going up to the gallery now. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. Like, my legs feel like they're gonna go, and I have to think of every ounce of my being, don't fall over. I just, I just have to keep going. Hi there, Jen. How are you feeling? I'm nervous, as usual. I like what I'm seeing. Great even caramelization all over. Well, let's see how you did. That looks terrific. Thank you. Nice even color, nice blushing pink with a touch of red in the center. Nicely seasoned. <laughs> well done, Jen. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> about as close to a photo finish as I think you're ever going to see when it comes to four steaks. Yeah. I'm thinking, okay, I might have a good chance here. Possibly. I don't want to battle with one other person. It's going to be down to that last grain of salt. That's how close it is. I feel a little bit nervous, but excited at the same time. Nobody knows what to expect. Ugh, uh, my stomach's in knots. All right, let's do it. You are four of the top eight home cooks in the country. And you proved it with this challenge. This decision came down to the finest of details. Taking everything into account, two home cooks had the slightest edge. And they are... Nadia. And... Jen. Oh my God. Thank you, Chef. Nicely done. Please head up to the gallery. I might run. I'm so happy. I'm going up to the gallery and I just made the top seven. Yay! I'm safe. I cooked a perfect steak. <laughs> I was doing everything I could to not be in this position. I thought I nailed it. I had a perfectly cooked steak. I have to clear my mind and just focus on the task at hand. Now it's really do or die. Marissa and Jonathan, this is it. A final head-to-head -head challenge to determine who will stay and who will leave the MasterChef Canada kitchen tonight. So far, you have had 15 minutes or less to impress us. This time, you have 30. You're gonna need every second to master the night's final French classic. Your fate comes down to a sweet finale. What is it? Sweet finale. Oh my God.
I'm wondering if this is my last cook. Your fate comes down to a sweet finale. A delicious creme caramel under a delicate dome of sugar. Thank God I'm not down there. The whole dish has to have an enticing golden color. And your perfectly set caramel needs to have a silky smooth consistency. If it falls apart, so will your dreams. Desserts are not my forte. I'm, I'm really worried. Creme caramel is very similar to creme brulee, and creme brulee is one of my wife's favorite desserts. So I should nail this. Everything you need to make this intricate dessert is at your stations. Marissa and I are gonna go in for one more battle. A little tired, but I gotta stay focused because I wanna win. Are you ready to make the most delectable cram caramel we've ever tasted? Yes, yes chef. chef. Jonathan's a great cook, so I'm up against some stiff competition. But I've been to military boot camp, so full throttle. Come on, Marissa, get your head in there. Your time starts now! First thing I gotta do is in the base for the creme caramel, which is just melted sugar. Creme caramel is a layer of caramel at the base, custard in the middle, and then you flip it over so the caramel is actually on top. With that 30 minutes, they have to multitask. They need to get the caramel cooking, cook another batch of sugar in order to make their cages, plus your egg custard. So three things simultaneously. Making this creme caramel is an enormous task because you only have 30 minutes, and most of the time, that creme caramel should be in the oven. Come on, guys. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Just stay focused. The caramel that I have at the bottom of my ramekin is perfect. My caramel, it's beautiful, golden brown. I put it in a nice bath. I need that to set. Now, I work on my custard. This is a crucial step. You need to add the hot milk and cream to the egg yolk base very slowly so that you don't overcook those eggs in the bowl. Marissa is already adding her scalded milk and cream to her egg yolk base. Marissa is laser focused. I'm noticing, though, Jonathan's moving kind of slow. I'm trying to be methodical and careful because I only get one chance at this. Uh, if the creme caramel doesn't set, you lost the battle. Keep going, guys. I see Marissa is actually in the lead. The most crucial element to this dish is the custard. I'm feeling pretty good about the timing. She just put her base in the oven, in that hot water bath. You guys are doing great. Good job, guys. Good job, good job, good job. While the custard's in the oven, I now have 16 minutes to sort out that sugar dome on top. I see Marissa is oiling the underside of a ramekin. That's where she's going to throw her spun sugar in order to create the cage. She is attacking this challenge with military precision. 15 minutes, you have 15 minutes. You're halfway. Got to get this creme caramel in the oven and hope that it cooks in time. Marissa had her creme caramel in the oven three minutes before Jonathan. I'm really worried about Jonathan right now. I think I've seen Jonathan oil the inside of his ramekin, not the outside. Oh, Jonathan. He's making a massive mistake. That's going to be so hard to get out. I can tell you, I've never seen that done before. That will not that work. Won't work. They're both on to their sugar for the sponge sugar cage. Jonathan, look down at Marissa's and see what she's doing. Marissa's trying to churn out her cage right now. And she's pulled it off. Yes, beautiful.
Jonas is trying to take his cage from the inside out right now. He's going to have such a hard time getting out of there. It's not like something you can punch out from the bottom and, and remove this. There's no way to get it out. I'm taking a knife and I'm trying to cut along the edges to see if there's a possibility that it's just being held because of some extra sugar on the outside. Uh, but it still doesn't come out. And I think this is the moment of truth he will realize he's done it the wrong way around. You have five minutes left. Five minutes. He is now doing it the correct way. Looks like Jonathan might pull through this. Go, Jonathan. Marissa's taking her flan out of the oven now. I need to give my custard at least two minutes in that blast chiller. So I, Usain bolted behind you. I feel like I'm really running out of time. I, I wasn't expecting to be this close to the edge. Jonathan. He's got to dig deep, and he's got to start moving. It'll be a miracle if he's able to pull this off. Let's hustle, guys. She's going for it. Two minutes, you have two minutes left. I've done every step. I've got my sugar dome. My elements are there. I just need this custard to be cool. Demoting time, guys. Let's go. Come on, guys. Go. Come on, come on, guys. Come on. <gasps> my hands are shaking so much. I run a knife around the ramekin, put a plate over top, close my eyes and flip it over. It comes out perfect. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful. But it's not over yet. One minute. You have one more minute left. Come on, one minute. No matter what, I'm going to flip it over, and I'm just going to have to accept my fate. He just tipped his upside down. He didn't put the plate on. Oh, one minute! You have one more minute left. Come on, one minute! I'm just going to have to accept my fate. Oh. Oh. It is completely collapsed. I basically got creme caramel sauce. Oh, my heart. Congratulations. <sighs> I didn't succeed. I didn't get to where I wanted to be. <sighs> I came here as a savory home cook, but just because something's unfamiliar to me doesn't mean I can't do it. And then Marissa? Chef Michael? You just went for it. Drive, drive, get the job done. And look at it. It's impressive. Yeah, I'm stunned. It glistens. It's crisp. It's amazing. The cook is wonderful on it. It is warm, has a good long flavor to it. It's absolutely delicious. <laughs> I'm about to cry because I didn't think I could do this. I really, really, really doubted myself on this one. I'm just overwhelmed by what I've just achieved. This is not a success, we know it. Right. I'm not gonna kick you when you're down, but I have to give you props for not giving up. Thank you. That's what being a chef is all about. Looks are deceiving because this creme caramel is a wonderful depth of flavor. It's creamy, very, very clean finish. You fought a good fight. Thank you. This means a lot to me. I don't ever give up. When things are going tough, you, you gotta just keep going. Marissa and Jonathan, 
Both of you just competed in three grueling pressure tests. And Marissa, in the end, with your back against the wall, you triumphed. Please take off your apron and head up to the gallery. I did it. I'm thinking of my family. I'm thinking of my girlfriend. I'm thinking of how much I doubted myself and beat that doubt and replaced it with pride. I can do anything I put my mind to. Awesome. Watching Marissa cook is really intimidating. She's a huge threat, and I have to keep my eye on her. Jonathan, you were three years old when your mother brought you from Trinidad to Winnipeg. She wanted to give you a better life. Little did she know, she was also giving Canada one of its finest home cooks. Everyone in this kitchen will miss you, your positive energy, and that megawatt smile. Now come on up and say goodbye. Well John! Thank you so much. Hello! Hey, oh my Jonathan! God. I'm going to hold my head up high and walk out of the MasterChef Canada Kitchen proud. I got an express apron at the beginning. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. This is an amazing dish. It's astonishing that you pulled this off. <laughs> Thank you. My family is going to be ecstatic to see how much I accomplished while I was here. I don't even like donuts, and this is delicious. Was that ever fun? The Red Team! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Jonathan. Who up there is going to be Canada's next master chef? Well, that's like picking the lottery ticket, so I can't tell you. No, you got to pick someone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I fought alongside Marissa all day, and I saw her determination, and I think that she can be the next master chef Canada. Jonathan, it's time for you to go and put your apron on your station. All right, thank you guys. It's been an amazing journey. Good luck, guys. I wanted some validation for the cooking skills that I have, and now I have that validation. Bye, guys. Good work, Jonathan. I'm leaving here very proud. This season on MasterChef Canada, five home cooks have been eliminated. But it's not over yet. Redemption is up for grabs. One of you will earn that white apron back and get to return to the competition. Go to ctv.ca slash MasterChefCanada right now to see which eliminated home cooks compete for a second chance. That white apron is within your sight. Incredible. Next time. Please help us welcome back. The winner of Redemption returns for an inspired team challenge. You'll be cooking for seven extraordinary Canadians. Cheers. These are monumental people. Four minutes out, guys. Four minutes from service. Get him on. Get him on. Come on. We're on the verge of complete chaos. Come in here.